Chris Hagen, we're back with my cousin, Shirley West, all right? And and again, like I was saying about Terry, I'd heard about you my entire life, but we only really met about 10 years ago. Oh, no, more like 20. Was it 20? Okay, it was well. A, a longer than 10, quite a bit. Okay. But we, we, I, I do everything based on how old my kids were. Oh, okay. And then I know you guys came down here, and then shortly after that, we came up we to your up house. In Chesterfield and, somewhere. Yeah, Chester's with Uncle time. George and yeah. Donna Kay, yeah. who we're going to meet here in a few minutes and everything else. So, um, now, where did you grow up? I grew up in North St. Louis on Riverview Drive. Okay. Maybe about five miles west of the Chain of Rocks Bridge. Chain of Rocks Bridge. Now, is how close is the new Stan Usual Bridge? to where you grew up, do you know? The one that goes over to Illinois? Yeah. Well, it's just a quarter of a mile further north than the Chain Rock the Chain, Bridge. Okay. But I, I was closer down toward Broadway. Okay, okay. So, so where did you go to school? I went to Baden School and then Beaumont High School. Okay. Then William Woods College. I was really? educated at William Woods College, All right. Washington University, and Purdue University. And in Purdue. Amazing. Now, what's your maiden name? Miller, or Mueller, as most of my family call it now, but we called it Miller at the right. time. Right, right. It's kind of weird how that works out. Yeah. yeah. Well, part of the family moved over to Illinois, and over in Illinois, everybody called him Mueller. Yeah. So now all that part of the family calls themselves Mueller. I'm kind of the only one left who hasn't died that calls ourselves Miller. Now... You're somehow, I mean, you're related to Donna Kay, yep. and then you're somehow related to my dad, yes. I guess, by marriage. Yes. Um, His dad was my mother's youngest brother. Okay. That's it. So Art Leffler right. was your mom's My mother's brother. youngest brother. Okay. Right. And where did she grow up? Uh, well, she was born in Belleville, Illinois. Right. Um, my grandfather moved the family to St. Louis when she was about seven. Okay, and then your father, what did he do? Well, he was actually third generation sort of St. Louis, and he was a vegetable grower. We had a number of acres, many acres, at right on the Mississippi. Really? Yeah. Oh, wouldn't you like to own that now? <laughs> Just across from, well, it's all industrial. Well, land, yeah, but, it's concrete. But uh, if you know anything about Mosentine Island, Nope. No, it's an island uh, it's actually south of the Chain of Rocks Bridge, okay. kind of a sandbar island, and uh, our land, we could see Mosentine Island, and there was the Mississippi, Mosentine, and then there was Mississippi on the other side, so it was an island out in, in the Mississippi River. Okay. I have never been on the Mississippi River. I think I did the Becky Thatcher or something like that once, but for my friends that have boats and go to Alton and stuff, I, I don't know what that looks well, like, like a lot of Jefferson Counties. We're right here on the river and none of us have ever yeah. really seen the river. Well, my dad was one of uh, six brothers and a sister, and we all, my grandmother lived next door to us. My uncle, who was my dad's business partner, lived on the other side. Another uncle lived down by Mozentine Creek, and so all of the cousins were like one big family. We used to swim from my our land across the Mississippi to Mozentine. Of course, I wasn't allowed to do that, but I did it anyway. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if they still do that. I mean, well, I don't know. It's you know, it, the river was pretty clean there, and. Um, we would go over there and sunbathe and swim and, and stuff like that, but my mother was always afraid I'd get swept down. Well, forever. yeah, kids, you do know. I mean, I, I I I used to be a pretty good swimmer. I still don't know that I I would do that. So, well, I was I was a, a swimming instructor and a lifeguard when I was a teenager, so I was pretty strong. Yeah, yeah. So, so how did you? William Woods is in Fulton, Missouri, right? And it's still primarily a girls' school. I mean, it's it's not entirely well, like, now, but then it was just all girls. It was right? all girls, yeah. And Westminster, which was where my brother went, right? And, and my same. cousin um, Braden Eisenbeis went there, and a whole bunch of my friends have gone. There. Well, it's I, a small school, but it's a very those are very popular schools, right? And they were pretty academic, oh. and um, 
I think I've heard, and I haven't really kept up with it, but I've heard that they've kind of merged and yeah. you can take classes either place and right. all of that. Yeah, and that's the way I understand it. Mm -hmm. And I know when my brother was there in the 80s, they kind of were doing some of that stuff anyway. Yeah. But now after my uh, cousin just graduated from there, there's, there's yeah, it's it's no longer exclusively guys or girls at either one of the schools by any stretch of the imagination. So then from there, what did, what did you major in at William Woods? Well, I majored in elementary education, okay. which at that time you were either a nurse or a teacher, and that was both the only choices you had. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. You know, and now it's anything you want to anything do. I mean, there's do. literally, I can't think of anything, you know, other than men's basketball and stuff yeah. like that. I mean, some of the sports, but yeah. even that's the lines getting blurred real quick right. too. So then you went to Washington U. Yeah. Still for education. Yeah, I was still in education. I was always drawn to the medical sciences for All some right. reason. And I did work um, when I was a student at Barnes and their cancer research and got kind of interested more in the medical side of life. And then um, that's where I met Terry. Well, that was my next question. So you just jumped right in. So you both met at, at Washington, Washington University. University. He wasn't delivering groceries no, or anything. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, we were students and at a fraternity party. Okay. Sorority fraternity party. Yeah. I'm a Gamma Phi, he was a Theta Xi, and yeah. they had a, a party. And yeah, that's, yeah, that's, I, again, I didn't go to college, uh, but I would have been in Greek life. Yeah. Yeah, I probably would have only been there for about as long as I went to junior college, but <laughs> nonetheless, I, I yeah. and, and for the guys watching this, you know, it's everything in life is not really what it appears to be. That's true. So when That's you go to college, true. you know, it, it's kind of like you're there to have fun and make friends and network, but at the same time, you got to go to class and make good enough grades so you can stay there so that you can have fun and, you know, and, and have all that stuff. And really? I didn't understand it. I thought I was there strictly to learn stuff and I didn't like what they were teaching me and how they were teaching me and I just I was a pain in the ass and they were pretty happy to see me go. Yeah. Uh, but I, no one ever mentored me and said, you're, you're, you're doing this all wrong. You're not gonna come out and know how to run a corporation <laughs> at the end of the first semester, and that's kind of what I thought. Yeah. It's, it's your first opportunity at real networking. It, it, absolutely, and I, I, I kind of missed the point, and I, and I think most of the kids today miss the point. The young guys that go to college and then they come back at Christmas and then they're done with college, it's like, no, you, you you're just did the same thing I did. You missed the point. Yeah. All right. So so then you guys meet. Did you get married then and then move to Indiana? Well, we got married did after we were finished. Well, after I was finished, he was a student for another nine years. <laughs> but not all at, at Washington University. Yeah. Um, two more years there and then he uh, got his... Uh, he then he wanted to work on his PhD, and he'd gotten two bachelors and one master's at yeah. Washington University, and then and I supported him through all of that. Really, I've supported him through nine years ago. Oh yeah, because yeah. he had uh, four before we got married, and right. then um, I had a, a degree in elementary education, but I never signed a teaching contract because he would wanted to go on to more schooling and I didn't I, I couldn't live out the contract if he right. you know and so I went to work for C V Mosby publishing company which publishes medical and dental books and journals and I did editing and that's when I really got onto the medical side. Yeah. Then I worked for several years for an ophthalmologist. Okay. Uh, kind of near the hill on Hampton and so Still in St. Louis. Still yeah. in St. Louis. And then um, he wanted to go for a PhD, but it's not a good idea to get all your degrees from the same school. And we needed to support ourselves because I was pregnant at the time and we'd been married four years by then. So I had okay. supported him through all that. And then um, he, was, he got offers from several universities, Cornell, Texas A&M and Purdue. Yeah. Which any other one would have been 
Fabulous. He, well, we, we had to have something that would support us. So he needed a teaching, either a, a, an instructorship or a teaching degree or right. something. So. And back in the early 60s, teaching was not a lucrative profession. This would have been profession. 1961. Yeah, that's yeah. not a lucrative. No. Uh, no, no. no, well, and I had a newborn baby. We no. moved to Lafayette with a three-week-old baby. So. But Lafayette is beautiful. West Lafayette <laughs> is beautiful. Yes. It I is, mean, for the people that haven't been to Indiana or wherever else, you always have these preconceived notions. Uh, and it's a no. Division One college town, so yeah. those towns are recession-proof. Right. And, it, you know, it's beautiful. Actually, I think recently, Wall Street Journal named it to say one of the, one of the ten best places in the United States to live. Yeah, all, all the way around. Yeah. Stuff to do, restaurants, safe, uh, just, yeah. just, and it's, you know, when, when, because what is there, 40, 50,000 kids that go to school there? About so, 45,000 this yeah, uh, last yeah. year, and I'm probably, maybe it'll be up closer to 50. Yeah, I don't yeah. Know. so Division One schools are just great places big to Big Ten. It is the Big Ten. Yeah, we've been to basketball games oh, with yeah. you and football sure. games with you. And yeah, you go to the Big Ten games, they're different than going to the Big Eight, and definitely oh. even Mizzou changed when they became in the SEC. Yeah. I don't know what happened, but it was just like immediately... There yeah, was this electricity. It's a deal. Oh, well, no, yeah. And then you, they get the schools get, of course, money for it, all of the TV rights and all that stuff. So they just have yeah, more big, opportunity to do more things. Big, big business. Uh, so we, Terry and I, we discussed your kids, and you were discussing how you guys moved there mm -hmm. with a three-week-old baby. Yes. And, and no money. And no money, but it didn't matter. Yeah. Well. You didn't think of it at the time. No, well, nobody had any it. money. Now it's just kind of everybody wants to start at the top, and 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 they don't do anything if they can't start at the top. And right. the older generation, nothing started at the top. Everybody started at the bottom. Now, I think and, if I remember right, we had a budget of ten dollars a week, and that had included baby food and all of our food and for groceries and and you know all the toiletries, anything else. That was ten dollars a week. That's I, all we had. Yeah. No, my wife and I have never had it that rough, and you know, my my parents tell the story of borrowing the neighbor's newspaper <laughs> after he had borrowed it from somebody else. Yeah. So they read the newspaper. You know, one guy got it, and then two or three yeah. other people read the newspaper. Yeah. It's just pass it around to all your friends because we couldn't all afford a newspaper. No, and now no kid knows what a newspaper <laughs> is because it's all done on the, their their cell, cell phones, phones, and they don't look at the end. They right. don't look at that. So things have just changed so yeah. much. And that's what I liked about Purdue was so many of the kids that go to Purdue learn to fly. Oh, yeah. So then whenever I run into somebody and I'll see a Purdue ring or I find out they're from Purdue, being somewhat of a, an idiot, I just go, hey, did you learn to fly? And they're like, oh, yeah. And then it's like, I'm the smartest guy in the room just because I knew that they probably learned to fly an airplane while well, they were at Purdue, which is on the is campus. Big deal yeah at Purdue and aeronautical engineering aeronautical science because well Neil Arm Neil Arm I knew that yeah, Neil Arm getting so. bigger than that but yeah. um yeah it's the school of the astronauts is what it's considered yeah so yeah, no, I mean, you, you name an astronaut, even the young kids are going to say yeah. Neil Armstrong, even though he's been gone for a long time. Okay. So, well, uh, I'm going to go ahead and kind of wrap things up just because we're all going out to lunch. Yeah. And, uh, but and we always, get to see Donna. we get to see Donna Kay, but I just cannot ever express how much uh, Linda and I and Kyle. And I got to leave Jessica out because she was never involved in any of this. But how much we always enjoy uh, being around you guys, staying at your house, uh, seeing things. It's just, just Good. absolutely been I a be joy. Happier. I love it. And uh, hopefully our we son will. More often. Well, you, you, well, and then last year with the COVID, nobody got to see anybody, and you know, older people kept getting older, and it was like. You know, I hope neither Shirley or Terry or mom or dad gets Get the COVID. And, of course, my mom gets it and coughs on my dad for the next 21 days. But <laughs> well, he's very lucky he didn't get it. Yeah, well, you know, there's always that cockroach that's yeah. going to survive whatever. There's always so. Yeah. So my family is a perfect example how one person can have it severely. Yeah and be under the same roof uh in the same room and cough and hack and sneeze and yeah. everything literally for 21 days and then the other person doesn't get it 
So that's where Personal that... Personal immunity of one kind or another. Yeah, yeah. And that's what makes everything so fascinating. Uh, and, and who knew that the coronavirus would then bring up so many different opinions? So there's as many different opinions as there is immune systems. So everybody has their own, and that's just the way it is. Well, we got our vaccines the 11th of January, which was the very first day it was offered. So yes. we were like... Yes, and they were shortly behind that, and we got ours right whenever we were able to get it. And I got lots of friends, and they're like, well, I don't know what's in it. And I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure you don't know what's in Budweiser, but by God, you drank <laughs> you a lot of that anyway. too. <laughs> you know, even if you Absolutely. looked at the list of the ingredients, you couldn't make it, you know. you know. So, but it's everybody has their own idea. I like to scuba dive. I it's like to snow life. ski. I, I like to do lots of things that nobody else wants to do. Well, it's their body, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's that medicine. wearing a diaper and having that ventilator tube stuck down my throat. <laughs> my uh, li throat. Literally, <laughs> literally, I'm 107 feet under the water looking over the Cayman Shelf down 20,000 feet as white tip sharks are coming after ah. me. Wearing a diaper with a ventilator tube down my throat scares the hell out of me. That was exhilarating. Although all the other divers were making fun of me because I evidently used up all my hair. Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, press uh, like and say something nice and share it. Thank you very much.